In this video I'm going to show you how to install all my ZSH plugins and add some extra functionalities to your terminal. At the end of this tutorial your terminal should look something like this, so you'll have a custom theme with left and right prompts displaying various useful information. Your file listings will be color-coded and files and folders will have proper icons in front of them. Your terminal will be able to auto-suggest commands based on your history, like this, and your commands will be syntax highlighted like this. This and many other awesome functionalities coming right up. In my previous videos I showed you how to set up ZSH shell, all my ZSH framework and the power level 9k team, which is by far the best terminal team in my opinion. And I showed you how to customize everything with various parameters and functions. So if you just joined this tutorial series, I advise you to go ahead and watch those videos first and then come back. I'll put the links to those videos in the description below. Ok, let's start. All my ZSH plugins are located in the dot all my ZSH slash plugins folder in your home folder. Dot in front of the folder or file name, in case you don't know, means that it's a hidden folder or file. And you don't normally see it in your normal file listings. Ok, so let's go first to our home folder and then let's go to dot all my ZSH slash plugins. If you list the content of this folder, you will see that there are a lot of plugins that come pre-installed with all my ZSH framework by default. So to browse them more easily, I suggest you use Midnight Commander or some other file browser similar to this. Then you can go into each of these folders and uh, most of them have readme files in them where you can see more about the plugins, how, what it's for, how it's used and so on. Okay, another way to learn more about the plugins is to go to this URL, I will put the link to this URL in the description below, where most of these plugins are listed, so all you have to do is basically just click on one of them and it will take you to the section of the page with the more description about the plugin. Some of these sections contain even the links to the repos of these plugins where you can find even more information. Ok, so once we have found the plugins that we like, how do we install them? It's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is to put the name of the plugin into .zshrc file in our home folder. So let's do it. Let's quit the MC, let's go to our home folder and then let's open our .zshrc file in some editor. I will use vim, so I will just type vim.zshrc and uh, I'm currently at the plugins, but let's simulate that I'm at the top of the file. So in order to find this section, just type slash and start typing plugins and it will take you to that section. So as you can see, plugins here are just listed one below another. So uh, to add another plugin here, all we have to do is basically type O to insert into the new line, copy the name of this plugin, come back here and paste it with the middle mouse button or shift insert. Then press escape to get out of the insert mode and type colon wq to save and quit. Ok, one more thing we need to do is to apply the changes from the zshrc file. To do that we can either restart our terminal or we can source .zshrc file. How we source it? Basically there is a command source .zshrc or we can use a shortcut a version which is dot, uh, zs dot and then path to the uh, zshrc file. Ok, so once the changes have been applied, our plugin is ready to be used. Let's take a look how to use it. So we can use either chuck or chuck car. Let's see how they work. If we paste chuck and hit enter, it will basically print random joke about chuck Norris here. If we use chuck cow, it will basically do the same thing, just in a more graphical way. Ok, now that you know how to find the plugins that you want and how to install them, let's take a look at some of them that I recommend for everyone. First on my list is Git plugin. Git plugin provides aliases and functions for working with of course Git. So let's see how that works. So for example, if I'm in a folder with a repo initialized in it, instead of typing git status, I can type just gst and see the status of my branch. If you want to see all the aliases that come with the git uh, plugin, you can type uh, alias grab git and you will see the list of all the aliases that are provided with this git plugin. As you can see, there is quite a lot of them. Another way 
to see what aliases and functions are provided with the Git plugin is to basically go to this previous page that I uh, talked to you about, find the Git plugin in this list here, so it's here, go here and then open, here's the section uh, for it, and then open the wiki page, and on this wiki page you will find in more detail all the aliases that are provided here and the uh, functions that are provided with the Git plugin. Second plugin on my list is ZSH Syntax Highlighting. And as you can guess by its name, it does syntax highlighting for your commands. So for example, if I type something like this, you will see that commands cat and grab are in a different color. Next plugin is ZSH Auto Suggestions. What it does is it basically looks through your history and it can suggest the auto completion of the command that you start typing. So for example, if I now go to my home folder and I start typing CD and uh, based on my history, it sees that uh, I've been very often into this project slash home website folder and it offers me to, to autocomplete. If I want to autocomplete, I will press the right arrow and then press enter. If I don't want to autocomplete, I bind the key to cancel autocompletion and it's control tilde for me and how to bind it I will show you here at the bottom of my .zshrc file here uh, you have to add this line and basically here you can see the uh, combination of uh, keys that I chose to clear out the suggest okay so next useful uh, plugin is called extract extract is a single command that's used to extract all types of archives so whether it is zip or tar.gz or any other kind of archive, you don't have to use different tools for that or remember all these complicated parameters. Uh, for each tool, you can only use single command, which is called extract. So let's demonstrate how it works. So if we now make a folder test and then let's uh, get into that folder and let's make 100 files in it uh, called test file from 1 to 100. Let's take a look. Okay, they are there. Now let's uh, basically archive all these uh, files into a file called archive.tar.gz. Okay, let's uh, delete all other files now. Let's take a look. Okay, we only have our archive here in this folder. So we don't have to use now a tar command with all these par complicated parameters. We can only use now extract and the name of the file. And as you can see, and the files have been extracted. Next on the list is a plugin called sudo. I don't know about you, but very often I forget to put the sudo in front of some command. There are a couple of ways to get sudo in front of the command easily without having to retype everything, but absolutely the easiest way if you haven't pressed enter yet is to just press escape twice. And this plugin will add the sudo at the beginning of the line. So for example, if I type, for example, apt update and I forgot to type sudo at the beginning, if I now press escape twice, like this, sudo will be prepended uh, at the beginning of the command and the cursor will stay uh, at the end of the command. Next plugin is called history. And it's basically a shortcut for the history command. So instead of typing the whole command history, you can just type h and get the list of your commands. And then if you want to execute, for example, uh, this command again, you can just type exclamation mark and the number of that command, press enter, it will uh, pull that command out of the history and then press enter once again to execute it. And the last plugin that we are going to cover is called cat img. It's used to print the image inside of the terminal. So for example, if I go to my home folder right here and do cat img logo.png, which is logo of my channel, it will look something like this. As you can see, it's not really pretty, but it's enough to get the idea of how the image looks like. For programmers, there are plugins such as npm, pip and other that can help you speed your everyday workflow a lot. But I leave that for you to explore and find the plugins for your specific needs. Finally, there is one more add-on that I highly recommend, which is not on my ZSH plugin. It's called Color LS and it's a Ruby gem. It's responsible for the fancy icons in the file listing that you saw before. 
Okay, so let's install it. So the first thing that you have to do is install Ruby. So sudo apt install Ruby full. I won't press enter now because I already have it installed in my system. Next thing that you have to do is to install the color ls gem. So the command is gem insta install color ls and press enter and it will install color ls. So now if you use color ls, it will print the folder content like this with the icons in front of every file and every folder. But of course you don't want to use color ls instead of ls command. So what we will do is create uh, two or more aliases. I created you can create as many as you like here in your uh, Vim uh, in your uh, .zshrc file. So as you can see I have here two aliases that basically do the following. Whenever I type ll or ls, they execute the color ls with certain parameters and they group the directories first. So uh, check this listing. So as you can see in this listing, native color ls listing, file and folders, files and folders are mixed. But if I do now like this, you will see that it first prints the folders and then uh, later the files. Okay, basically that's it. Uh, once you created this aliases, all you have to do is basically to save and uh, write and quit your uh, .zshrc file and then source it or restart the terminal. So I will not restart the terminal, I will actually source this file once again. And once you do that, your uh, ls and ll commands are ready to go. Okay guys, this concludes our tutorial series on how to customize your terminal. In the next videos, we'll talk about how to use your terminal efficiently. I'll gather the list of the most useful shortcuts and commands that I use in my everyday workflow. And of course, if you'd like to see more tips and tutorials like this, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.